You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with Max and Gino from the band Crow Magnum from Montreal. Their new EP, Born Free, is coming out on September 17th. And they've already put out a new single from it. It's called Tunguska. The music video is up on YouTube. you got to check it out. Max, Gino, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. And welcome to The Pit. Hi, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, man. Appreciate yeah. it. First of all, let's know your voices so people can recognize your voice to your name. So if you could just say your name and what you play in the band. Yep. Uh, I'm Gino. I'm uh, the bass player in the band. Uh, sometimes backup vocals. Uh, that's pretty much it. And my name is Max, and I sing, play guitar, and whatever else needs to be done. And Crow Magnum kind of began with you, Max. You and the past drummer, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, one of my buddies, Bobby G., uh, we were in this other local band here called Mad Parish. Um, I was actually playing bass in that band, and uh, we had a bit of free time. It was a big band with six members. Members would change around a lot, so we'd have some downtime where we're not doing shows and stuff. And we kind of just started originally as a kind of a side, fun side project. And it was a kind of a different direction musically from what you were doing? From Mad Parish, yeah. Mad Parish is maybe, I guess, I'd qualify it as like power metal kind of Iron Maiden-y kind of deal. There's three guitars, a um, little bit of prog here and there. And Crow Magnum was just kind of meant, at that time we were three-piece when we started out. So it was just meant to be a little more kind of uh, simple, brutal, heavy, uh, to kind of contrast what we already were kind of doing on, in that other band. And how about for you, Gino? You, you showed up later on with Crow Magnum, and now it's kind of like become the Max and Gino machine right now, right? <laughs> That's what it seems like. Yeah, yeah. I joined uh, what I think spring twenty fourteen, Max. Yeah, it's been seven years. Yeah, it's been a while. I've been in this band, and uh, it's it's been uh, it's been a fun ride. Um, it's it's been great. I'm having a great time. As far as influences go, what pumps you up? What gets you excited? What makes you inspired to do what you do? Uh, well, okay. The main thing is music, and a lot of my influences come from uh, progressive rock, progressive metal mostly. A uh, big Rush fan. Um, I just enjoy music in general, heavy metal. Um, outside of music, I enjoy hockey. I'm a big hockey fan. Uh, that's how, that's my only way of keeping fit, playing hockey. And, and coming into this band, Crow Magnum, obviously you guys had to riff on a couple of things to figure out like where this is going to go. So what, what do you feel like you bring to Crow Magnum in terms of your own influences? What, where do you feel like you took the sound? Um, I think I had I add a little extra to the bottom end. Um, uh, I mean, Max Max wrote most of this uh, this this EP, and uh, he did a great job with it. Um, for me, it was just bringing in more of my, um, I guess you could say my Getty Lee type influences. I'm not comparing myself to him at all. Don't get me wrong; he's he's way ahead above my league, but uh, the little nuances in the background and so on i think uh i think i helped bring that to the band a little bit but uh but not that max really needed me to help him with that he's really good at what he does so and so the fundamental thing about this it seems to be like Cro magnum is like you kind of have this uh respect for the ancient while at the same time kind of trying to see how that fits into modern times am i totally off on this no i would say you're pretty dead on yeah that's <laughs> that's a nice way of describing that. I should write that down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you saw right through us, man. Right through us. <laughs> but yeah, we definitely agree with that. It's uh, you know, we, well, Crow Magnum, like really the meaning of the word Crow is kind of like the means the beginning, and Magnum, if you look it up, means the end, right? So when you're trying to find, at least for me, when you're trying to find all the bands I've been in, when you're trying to find a name. You don't want to have a name that's so specific that like you kind of pigeon your whole pigeon your whole yourself into doing something too specific as well, you know, with the idea of wanting to kind of cover lots of different ground and dynamics, the band name we felt should kind of represent that. So when your band name means the be the beginning to the end, that kind of leaves it open for anything. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely, cuz it's like if uh, if you were to just went ahead and called yourself Crow Magnon, then I would imagine that this is all just supposed to be kind of like, I don't know, Manowar or something like that. But Caveman metal. 
Yeah, exactly. But you've you've taken that element and that's just a piece of it now. You've mixed it with these other ideas and created something new. Yeah, it's it's and I mean, you know, some songs will deal more with the past, some songs will deal more with the future, you know what I mean, depending on the subject matter. Some most I mean Born Free itself was written a few years ago before this pandemic, but it applies almost in any period, right? And more so now, I think, you know, it's not like I planned it or anything, but it definitely applies to the current times that we're in. And Tunguska is something I wanted to get into since this is your new single that you got the music out for. Uh, this The song is really like what I think of as being like the Tunguska event. As soon as you hit play on the song, it's like flattening the trees in your mind, just like a giant explosion. Is that more or less why you wanted to name it that? Yeah, basically that, that whole song is about, you know, uh, that specific event. So the idea was to, to have that reflected in the music as well, right? There's like, you know, there's there's moments of high intensity dynamics and then there's kind of, you know, that, that melodic breakdown in the middle that kind of, to me, when I listen to it, signals the end, right? It's I, I feel like the music does evoke some of the visuals that I I hope people see in their heads, right? If they know about the Tunguska event, it should evoke certain visuals. Was it hard for you guys to choose what song to make a music video for, or did that song kind of pop out from the, the from the five? Um, it, to be, I guess it was kind of like we wanted to build up to the singles that we're going to put out. Right. So like right now as a teaser, we chose the song cause it's fast, intense, quick, you know, uh, easily digestible in the sense, you know, you don't want to, you know, ask people to listen to your eight minute Epic right off the bat. I feel like, so, you know, something quick and intense that catches your attention to then hopefully bring you back when born free, um, the single in the video released in September. And, uh, ideally we're working right now, slowly, but surely towards, uh, also shooting a third video for uh, Congregation, which is another track on the album. And in, with making this EP, is some, something I kind of always like to ask people is like, what was it for you in the process, uh, for each of you? Like, what do you think was the biggest challenge for you? Was there something that stood out to you guys in this process or this album that was like, that was the really tough part to nail down just the way I wanted it? Um, Gino, would you agree that there's probably a whole a whole list of things <laughs> when it comes to recording an I album. Was, I was running category. through them all in my head. Right. Same here. There's, I was like, which one do I bring up? What do I bring yeah, up? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, from, from having a, a drummer that just had to learn the parts once before the recording to um, who knows what else, technical difficulties with our recording stuff. Uh, there was a lot of uh, obstacles we had to overcome to get this one out. I think, I think, I think we hit, Almost all of them, if not most of them, right? <laughs> so our Pretty original much. drummer kind of bowed out right as we were going into the recording process, right? So that would be the first thing where, oh, okay, well, we got to slow this down. And we got a new drummer who obviously we asked him kind of an impossible job of, you know, learn these songs right away and then record, right? Most drummers will have the chance to, I don't know, play them live for a year, year and a half before you record. So that was tough, I'm sure, for him as well. Um, and a lot of this, because of the pandemic, we couldn't actually go to the producer's studio, right? For a while because of the, the, the rules and stuff. So we actually had to get set up at home, which we weren't set up at that point to do to actually record at home. So all the, as Gino said, the technical difficulties you run into just plugging up the computer. And I mean, you know, I'm not particularly computer savvy, so I've had to learn a lot of stuff when it comes to the interface and even the actual program and how it works. So it was a huge crash course in do it yourself recording basically. And I think we're better for it now having done it, we know how to do it, but it was tough. Yeah. I could definitely see that being a uh, part of the process. It's just like everyone had to totally change how they approach making music through all of this. And I can imagine Montreal must've been totally totally a different place through all of this too because there's so much music that happens in montreal right yeah i mean usually when it's not pandemic time it's it's, it's one of the liveliest cities probably in north america there's festivals and all sorts of different styles of music the jazz festival um obviously heavy montreal every year comes through so yeah it's it's it's, it's a little odd to have not been to a live venue in like the last year and a half yeah 
Is there anything that you found yourselves filling that void with other than the music? Or did you find yourself just kind of digging deeper and trying to write and record and stick with the music? For me, it was pharmaceuticals. No, I'm kidding. That's a joke. <laughs> yeah. I find they even me out. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> for me, it was just, That's I awesome. guess, you know, the negative is there. <laughs> That's a sound bite. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the negatives, what things and aspects of it are there, but obviously like anything, if you look for the positives, you'll find some. So it did afford some of us, in my case with my work, it afforded me a lot more free time, to be honest, at least for that, you know, second or the first bit of the pandemic. So I took it upon myself to, like I said, focus more on getting the recording done, spending more time downstairs in the studio um, and also uh, starting up my comic book as well. Those are kind of the two big projects I worked on the last year and a half. And that kept me going. That kept me, you know, I think when you work on something creative, um, it definitely helps level out your mood in, in, in dire situations. Definitely. It was much needed. Uh, the, the, the creative uh, release that we had with this record. And even like Max said, he had the comic book. I had other, another project that I'm working on, like, on my own too uh so it's it's uh, uh yeah the cre- creative release is very important uh, i think it helped get through this uh, i wanted to get more into the writing process that went into this ep so for you guys was this a lot of file sharing or did you guys actually manage to like meet up in person and share ideas like in the same room um most most of the material thankfully other than maybe for our new drummer as we mentioned um had been written before so we'd had i don't know if you want to call it a luxury but we the chance to at that time get together and jam out work out the structures the parts and stuff like that so most of that was already done which helped um i mean once you get used to the file sharing and recording at home at at first it's it's like really frustrating and you run into all sorts of issues but once you get the hang of it obviously it does make things easier once you've kind of mastered the basic steps um so thankfully a lot of that was done, but there was still some stuff that was um, changed during the recording process. Um, and obviously with our producer, once we could get to the point where we could go back to his studio, um, there were some, you know, he's a great producer and has great ideas. So he helped us out on that too. And adding, you know, little textures and things and just lists, little keyboard pads and things in the back just to, you know, uh, inflate certain parts a little bit. It's always nice to have that outside perspective to kind of show you how you can add these little things. <laughs> yeah, the, you need that kind of impartial voice that can add those cool things, but also sometimes say, you know what? Like, And we didn't have a lot of these. The producer was great, but there were certain moments, like one specific thing where he was like, no, you got to change that. That sucks. And he was so passionate and adamant about it. I was like, okay, I have to take him seriously, right? But on that point he was right and i mean it was far few and far between didn't happen too often but you know his his opinion is definitely valid he knows what he's doing so alain landero landero productions just throwing that out there shout out (laughs) all right (laughs) i need to ask about the comic book now because like this piqued my interest and it's it's a I think a really cool idea is that you aren't the first, obviously, to do this, but it's it's something that's still pretty unique. I, what is it that kind of grabbed your idea about, like, oh, maybe I should do, like, a graphic novel to kind of go with the music? Um, like, originally, it wasn't necessarily an idea that kind of strung out directly from the band, but as I started producing my first issue... You know, I, I realized thematic wise, like theme wise, it was exactly basically, you know, usually your convictions, your passions, what you believe in should to me kind of come out in your art, whether it's music or illustration right, or comic books. Right. So I guess maybe subconsciously, but as I progressed with a comic book, I realized that the themes were completely the same and mirrored each other. So, you know, in this modern world of social media and that I figured, you know, any help for either thing for music or for, for my art or for comic books, you know, if we can cross promote and get more attention on either product, that's great. Right. So 
that bit of cross promotion just seemed kind of obvious because the theme was exactly, exactly the same, right? The first story is even titled, <clears throat> excuse me, it's even titled Born Free, the first issue. Well, okay. <laughs> so the, fitting the themes together so well, it also seems like now you've kind of created a visual for the band. You've you've found the artwork that just fits with the music now. Not that you had artwork before, but uh, the this just seems to fit really well. <laughs> Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Cause uh, yeah, like, you know, years prior, the artwork was done by someone else. And as most artists, I was insecure about my art. So I wasn't, you know, feeling it right away, but uh, definitely the comic book gave me more confidence. So then I jumped into kind of the pool of doing the artwork for the band as well. So I, I, I don't know if you've seen the album artwork, right. For born free, but that image there, that's kind of my first official image for the band. It's also going to be on our t-shirts as well. So. Looking forward to that. Cool. I'm going to have to get my hands on one. <laughs> Is there other graphic novels or anything like comic books that kind of came to mind as like inspiration behind this comic book at all? Or is it just kind of purely like something that you've never thought of doing before? And No, I mean, I've been drawing since, you know, probably since I could, right? I can't even remember. Um, and illustrating and stuff. Uh, I studied visual arts in college and university. And oh, yeah. uh, like my, my day job actually is I'm a visual arts teacher in high school. Oh yeah. So I produced strips and co like comic books and stuff. when I was like a teenager in my early twenties. And at that point starting to go to university for teaching. And I played in bands even back then I've been playing in bands since I was 13. So at that point, art kind of guided me into teaching in that career. And I kind of focused a lot more on music. Um, and again, now when the pandemic hit, you know, and almost nothing going on with music and all that extra free time, like I said, even though we had time to write songs and record, I found some time. I thought, I kind of thought, you know, it was a challenge. I, I kind of thought I sucked because I hadn't done any comics yet, to be honest. So it was kind of just an extra kick in the ass to, to get me to actually sit down and, and, and draw uh, and draw a sequential story, right? Which is something else and just doing illustrations and the idea of the story is this a story that you kind of had in your head for a while not really no um i've been filling up sketchbooks for like the last two three years of what i would call my my big idea right my my epic story um which i still do and just fill it with ideas visual written whatever um but then when i sat down to work on an actual comic book there's so much problem solving that's involved right and and with each illustration that I was like, I don't, the, the Epic was too big for me. It just seemed like unattainable, right? Seven different worlds and seven different stories. And, you know, it's a little crazy. So I said, why don't I just scale it down a bit and find something that can be fun where I can do what I want. I can get a little crazy. It could be a bit surreal, a bit cartoony, a bit violent, right? Like I just basically do what I, I want to do rather than, I guess, feeling boxed in. Right. So that's kind of how the idea came. And the basic idea is just, you know, if, if, <laughs> if, you, if you don't keep your ego in check and you're a total psychopath, uh, that's basically how the character deals with the world <laughs> and his frustrations. <laughs> so it's a little over the top. It's, it's meant to be right. Yeah. I mean, the, the character, you know, every, no one works in a void and usually have inspiration you know, for certain characters. So like I was big into like image comics in the early nineties. So, you know, there's probably a little bit of pit in there and the max and some more obscure stuff, a bit of the ultimate warrior, right? The wrestler. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Comics. I will always tip my hat off to Jack Kirby. He's considered the king of comics. Right. Um, most people, you know, aren't aware of exactly the dynamic between Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. And I'm not going to get into that, but like ultimately if you do a bit of research, you'll find out that, you know, Jack Kirby created most of the original kind of Marvel universe. Right. Um, so anything by Jack Kirby, especially his stuff kind of in the seventies where it gets a little more surreal and out there and cosmic and, 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 and I would say, even though he probably never dabbled uh, slightly psychedelic is always interesting um as far as new stuff uh i would tip my hat to ed piscor who's got a new horror comic out called red room it's all about 
uh, Murder for Profit on the Dark Web. So this one's definitely uh, for adults. I wouldn't recommend that one for children. Uh, but if you're into that kind of stuff, into you know splatter and gore horror movies and stuff, you'll probably like that one. Um, when it comes to music, I mean, it's vast, right? Like I I, yeah. I like stuff from the '60s every decade. You know, I can point out the bands I like. They usually tend to be the heavier bands, right? Um, even though we don't necessarily have heavy metal as we know it in the early '70s, you've got Sabbath, Deep Purple uh rainbow i'm really into from kind of the more uh i don't want to call them nostalgia bands right i i don't like that term but that's what some people call them um and all the way through to more modern stuff i'm into kill switch engage uh older Avenged sevenfold um danko jones kind of on the rock side and trivium i always find trivium pretty interesting I haven't heard anybody talk about Danko Jones in so long, and that just makes me so happy to hear you say that guy. That guy was awesome. <laughs> was, that that guy just yeah, he kicks ass. He doesn't he doesn't seem to age, and like the stage show is amazing. The, the songs are are quick and catchy, and like he just I, I think he's got it down. It's almost like really close to perfection. That's the way to do it. <laughs> Well, and I just got so jealous too in that one music video. He had Lemmy show up. It was just like, yeah. oh, you so, you just get to hang out with Lemmy. Oh, you jackass! <laughs> well, he's, he's he's like the Canadian Lemmy in a way. You could almost sort put it that way. Yeah, yeah, he's sort of, sort of like the yeah. I could see he's, it. He he is somewhat of a a mythic figure. <laughs> he's been doing it so long. It's crazy. <laughs> well, and and being from Montreal too, and being surrounded by so much music and stuff, it. Do, do you feel like Crow Magnum is from Montreal? Like this is like a band that comes from this place or do you not really feel attached to any place? I see. That's a good question. Yeah. I mean, no matter what the, you know, your environment's going to influence the music, you know, if, if we were living in, in the Caribbean or something like, I'm sure the music would have a slightly different flavor. Right. So yeah, I, I'm sure. Sh- I'm sure there's a distinction, you know, from city to city and there's definitely like a huge metal scene here and a, and a vibe to it. Um, so I'm sure that, that, that must show up, you know, in our music. I mean, we're proud, definitely proud from being in Montreal. We don't, we don't hide that fact. It's, it's a pretty big metal town. So it's, it's yeah. something definitely to be proud of. Right. Well, it's, I seems to be discovering bands from Montreal all the time and there's a lot of progressive, there's a lot of power metal, uh, I feel like that's a kind of the two biggest genres that I run into, but there's also a lot of grindcore. What do you see a lot of, or what have you seen a lot of? That, it's kind of what I feel is great. Cause like every time we go do a show, we'll, we'll play with, you know, three to four, maybe five other bands that all have like completely different styles. Uh, even though it's all technically metal. Right. So, right. I mean, the, the last show we played, that was March 8th, right right before the pandemic kind of started, the lockdowns and stuff started. Um, there was like this kind of industrial Marilyn Manson type band with, you know, makeup and costumes and stuff. And then, you know, the first act was just kind of a straight up thrash metal band. And then you got another band that's like stoner rock, you know. So I, I think what I like is the variety. I mean, for myself, at this point, I like a lot of different styles as long as you do it well. And, and you, you know, you play in time and it's tight and it sounds good. You know, I, I'll respect that. <laughs> and for yourself, what do you see on the horizon? Like, I, I know that you got this album coming out in September and you got probably some more music videos planned for it. But and right now everything's up in the air as far as shows. But what do you see on the horizon for this project? Well, um, number one, if we could start playing some shows again. Uh, that would be awesome. Uh, that would mean that also myself and Gino have to find two partners right now that we're missing for the live show. Um, but we've got a few buddies uh, in and around Montreal that can, you know, probably help us out at first if we, we can book some gigs. So that'd be nice. Um, as you said, definitely, uh, we've got another video ready for Born Free uh, when the EP comes out. And then we'll more than likely be doing one last one for Congregation for this EP. Um, so that's probably near the end of the summer. We'll start shooting that video. And after that, if there are gigs or whether there aren't gigs, uh, we will probably in the late fall, start working on recording again, uh, the next EP. 
So I would say those are the kind of the, the immediate plans for the next six months. That's awesome. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, you got to stay busy, man. Like nothing, you know, it's like small steps. And, and if you don't do anything, nothing moves ahead. But, you know, once you've done a month of small steps, you can see like a bigger chump, chunk of it kind of get completed. You know, it's always a work in progress. What advice would you give to anyone who's just trying to achieve their dreams? Uh, practice. I think that's the key. Uh, yeah, just keep uh, keep trying to better yourself. Always make yourself better. That's, that's important. Stick with it. That's the only way you're going to get there, you know. Uh, there's always going to be people telling you you can't do it, whether that's family, friends, or just people you don't know. And it's unfortunate sometimes when, you know, you have family members and friends who are kind of pushing against your dream. But, you know, the people who do tend to make it seem to be the ones who are like, no, leave me alone. I'm going to, you know, follow my path. And even though most of the time what happens is when you first start out, you're not making any money. You know what I mean? You're not surviving off it. You might have to take those part-time jobs, you know, to keep it going. But the only people who succeed and get to that point are the ones who stick with it, right? You can't get there if you don't stick with it. Wise words from somebody who knows everybody. You guys, this has been awesome. Everyone, you've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been talking with Max and Gino from the band Crow Magnum. Their new EP, Born Free, comes out on September 17th. You got to check it out. You guys, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and hopefully we'll do it again in the future. Sounds good. Thanks for having us. Thank you, man. Much appreciated.